tank. Uh, I'm clueless. I'm completely blocked. Two of the biggest games of the year come out on the exact same day, and I've no idea which one to talk about. You think it's easy to choose a game, but there's a method to those things. I have this, for example. Super Smash Bros. for the Wii U. You can play as all your favorite Nintendo characters and Jigglypuff, but still, it's such a fun game to play with friends. I mean, I can tell you how great this game is, but I cannot forget this. Pokemon Omega Ruby. One of my favorite generations is finally in 3D. <sighs> I have no idea which I should pick. Should I choose Pokemon Omega Ruby, or should I choose Super Smash Brothers? Or maybe should I choose Pokemon Smash Ruby, or should I choose Super Poke Brothers? I have no idea which one I should pick! <laughs> you know what? There is only one way that we can settle this. Have you ever wondered what would ever happen if we put Pokemon Omega Ruby and Super Smash Brothers for the Wii U in the microwave? Let's find out! One cooking session later. And what we get, ladies and gentlemen, is this. The result of a labor of love of developers that really care about their final... Son of a bitch! Well guys, they are finally out! Super Smash Bros for the Wii U and the third gen remakes of Pokemon. And I have to say, those two games are great, but I've had a lot of hard time with thinking how should I combine those two into one video until I realized the Pokeballs in Smash Brothers. Cause I love the items of the series, I mean I enjoy this ever since Melee in 2001. But I know what some of you already may say. Gee, Blabler, you're such a noob for using items. You should play Final Destination, no Fox items only. Wait. But seriously, as much as I enjoy competitive play just like the next guy, turning all the items on sometimes is really fun and leads to a lot of chaos. Sometimes it is nice to play with people who don't know what wave dashing is and you just want to have crazy fun with friends and family. And Pokeballs are pretty much the epitome of craziness, since you have no idea what's gonna come out of it. And some of them are truly awesome. Now, just to clarify, I'm not choosing my favorite Pokemon in this list, just the ones that are pretty cool as a Pokeball item. And that's why I'm gonna talk about the top 10 Pokeballs in the Smash Bros. games. Go! Yeah! Number 10. Ay, Moltres, you can't catch a break. Poor typing, underwhelming stats, and especially the fact that another legendary surpasses it in every way possible makes Moltres rather obsolete. But it's definitely much more dangerous in Smash Bros because touching it will send you flying. Unlike other legendary Pokémon that shoot a rather ineffective projectile, with Moltres it's just one touch and then oh bye bye Granum also works by the same concept, though it only damages you a little bit and not knock you out like Moltres does, though Gralum does take a little bit more space of the screen. In fact, a lot more space. Mommy! Number 9 On a regular day, this Pokemon would never, never make it on a top list of any kind. But I have to make an exception here because Unknown is pretty cool as a Pokeball item. Yeah, Beedrill had this whole horde attack thing happen a couple years before, but there is something more satisfying about being pummeled by multiple unknown, because you never know where they'll pop from. Not to mention they can even launch a player off the screen if they're unfortunate enough to be caught. It's simple, but effective. Number 8 If we talk about the Pokeballs in Smash Brothers, we must mention Snorlax. Now, Snorlax is dangerous for two reasons. The most obvious one is that when he's very large, he can cover a lot of space on the stage, and he can most likely hit every opponent. But the other reason why Snorlax is dangerous is that the moment you touch it before it becomes supersized, you're gonna be launched off of the stage. Very similar to Moltres, actually, but it's not even a legendary Pokémon. 
And that's pretty much the reason why Snorlax has never missed a Smash Brothers game. And I don't think it's gonna change anytime soon. Number 7 Electrode is one of those Pokemon that can even harm the user. Its explosion is massive and can send one flying in an instant. But what really makes Electrode cool is the fact it can be used as an item. Right when it turns red, players can grab it and throw it at an unassuming opponent. Sometimes it backfires when you don't time it right, but when it works, trust me, it's a blast. What? Okay, fine, I know what you want, I read the comments, okay, here we go. I'm just gonna stand here, prepare the hands, here we go. Number 6 I don't have many words to say about the attack of the Lottie Twins in a Smash Brothers game, but safe to say, it's awesome. Just watch it for yourself. It reminds me of an old saying my great-great-grandfather used to say. Bitchin'. Number 5 was ever a definition for a kamikaze Pokemon, that would be Piplup. If you get trapped in its attack, prepare to go down alongside with it. <laughs> Even if he sacrifices a life for your sake so you can have one extra KO at the end screen, he's gonna be there for you. Piplup, you're a trooper and I salute you. Mostly because you're better than Oshawott. Number 4 While 97% of the Pokémon in Smash Bros. inflict damage, there are a couple Pokémon that actually do unique things, and my favorite one of them is absolutely Mew. Mew has always been a fan favorite ever since the good old days of Red and Blue, and he's just as rare in Smash Bros. Sure, in the first few games he just flies off, but in the last few games, let's just say you want to stand exactly where Mew shows up, because if you do, he'll drop one of the coolest items in the whole game, music CDs. And they are awesome! It adds more music to an already amazing soundtrack, and how can you say no to that? N n I cannot do that. Mew is giving out more goodies, and really, isn't this the whole point of this time of the year? Did I just manage to shoehorn a Christmas message? Yes. Yes, I did. Merry Christmas, everyone! Number 3 For the first Pokémon that got announced before Generation 5 was a thing, I'm surprised Zorark was never playable. But putting it in a Pokéball is definitely awesome. And why? His attack is freaking cool, that's why! Now, it may look similar to both Ike and Greninja's final smashes, but here's the thing. It isn't even a final smash! Zork just attacked the nearest enemy and just starts barraging the opponent with tons of hits, and it looks so very satisfying. It doesn't send any opponents high flying, but come on! They even dimmed the lighting of the stage to set up the mood, that's so cool! Zorak is awesome, and I cannot wait until it's playable in the next Smash Brothers game. Please. Number 2! Okay, I know what you're gonna say. Why is Clefairy that high on the list? I mean, it's just like Togepi. It uses a metronome attack and something random happens on the screen. But fret not, dear viewers, because I'm referring to Clefairy in the N64 version of Smash Brothers. All it essentially does is copy attacks of other Pokémon, but due to the fact that Clefairy is just a 2D sprite, like any other Pokeball Pokemon in that game, it's kind of hilarious to see all the crazy attacks, even though it doesn't even move an inch. And seriously, nothing, and I mean nothing, beats a giant Clefairy falling from the sky. Clefairy can be anything, and it's pretty hilarious to take its shape of other Pokemon, and that's the reason why it's on the list. What? No! I want to choose Ho, I really do! Once again, it surpassed Moltres with having a much cooler attack. What with, you know, engulfing a huge chunk of the stage with flames? But you know what? There is another Pokémon that has a similar attack, just more condensed, 
and far more effective. And that's Entei. When Entei shows up, if you're unfortunate enough to stand next to it, prepare to be dropped in a fire spin. But this is not your 35 damage attack, oh no! This is 100% Infernal Cage of Misery. In melee, one's percent should go up by 70%, and while granted, that number got nerfed in the next couple games. But in the new game, it can even launch off an opponent if the percentage is high enough. While Ante will never be a Pokemon players will use in competitive play, at least it can have the honor of being number one on this list. Uh, guys, the video's not over yet. I have one more surprise for you. My knowledge in Smash Brothers is pretty wide, but I don't really have a master's degree in Smashology, so I decided to enlist the help of a good friend of mine, Smash Master Show, and let you guys know what is his favorite Pokeball in Smash Brothers. Take it away, buddy! There is no one more qualified to talk about Pokemon than I am. The guy who does not play Pokemon. But I play Smash Brothers, so I mean, hey, one out of two ain't bad. It was tough for me to narrow down which Smash Brothers Pokemon was my favorite. Some are hardcore OP, some are adorable. Two incredibly equally important qualities. But after much soul searching, I figured it out. I know who I want to become the very best like no one ever was alongside. Now, are you sitting down? Make sure you're sitting down because you're going to have a lot of questions. I'm going to have the answers, but I can't give you the answers if you're busy furiously typing away at your keyboard. So just sit down, enter your happy place. It's Goldeen. Ha! Boom! Ah! 180! And no, this is not a joke answer. I've never been more serious in my entire life. Maybe that's why I can't get a girlfriend. But I actually have good reasons. A good reason. A reason. When you're unlucky enough to summon it, it just does a little dance, makes a little of... And then it leaves. It purposefully serves as the one dud Pokemon in the game. It's such a freaking troll, it can even appear out of Master Balls in Smash 4. Balls that otherwise, 95% of the time, unleash legendary Pokemon. I like Goldeen because you get to be a massive asshole when someone other than yourself summons it. Now, yeah, obviously, of course, when you get it, it's the worst thing since that time there was that one pistachio you just couldn't open and it was the most traumatizing 10 seconds of your life! But when your friends slash enemies slash future slaves summon it, it's amazing. And then you get to just turn to them and go, hey. What? Goldine used Splash. It's not very effective. And that's why no one ever comes over to my house anymore. Not because of Goldeen, because, uh, people keep getting shot. Thank you very much for watching, guys, and I have to extend a special thank you to Smash Master Show for helping me out. And if you want to watch one of his videos, Badoof and Badoof, one of the most hilarious fanfic readings I've heard in my life, click right there and support him. He's a really funny guy. And of course, if you want to watch one of my other videos, Sonic 2 Game Gear Review, it's right there. Subscribe if you want to follow the rest of my content. And I do want to apologize for not releasing as many stuff as I can because I work full time during retail in the holidays. And if you don't know the nightmares of Black Friday, it's real. So. Not in terms, you know, that I didn't survive. Obviously, I'm here, but I, it really makes me more fatigued than I would like to be. But I'm still catching up on games. There's still more stuff I want to talk about before the end of the year, so look forward to that. And until then, guys, take care.